Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 617. Estrogen replacement is now safe for breast cancer patients with ER plus breast cancer. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about um, an announcement that I've been waiting for for years and years, and that is that giving women after menopause estrogen replacement, if they have had estrogen receptor positive cancer, is not dangerous. It does not increase their chance of death. It does not increase their chance of recurrence of their cancer. It is safe as long as they are not metastatic. If they have been treated and they're, uh, they weren't metastatic when they were treated, then they can take estrogen both um, throughout their body by oral or patch or pellet, and they can take it vaginally if they just want to take it for painful intercourse or dry vagina or bladder infection. Finally, the National Cancer Institute came out July 22nd of 2000 and 22, and said, oh, we did a huge study, and now we realize it's safe for women to take estrogen, even if they've had breast cancer, as long as they weren't metastatic, which I've been waiting for for years. This is like one of those things where I read the article and started screaming, finally, that they have come up with this, because my experience in my practice has always been If a patient absolutely positively has estrogen, they can't live without it. It is so, um, it's imperative that they have their estrogen or they can't have a normal life. Then we often will give them estrogen if they'll sign a high-risk consent, taking taking on the risk themselves because this is something that is not the standard of care for the nation, but it takes years and years and years and years to get a standard of care to change. So I'm not, I, I have no hope of this happening next year where they're going, where the uh, American College of OBGYN or the American College of Endocrinology is going to come up and say, oh, uh, everybody who has breast cancer who hasn't had metastases can have estradiol. Meh, it's probably still a decade away again. So it's a big leviathan of medical thought, and it takes forever to turn it around. But this is the first step. When we have a big study that shows that women who have had breast cancer who get estrogen do not have a higher risk of death from breast cancer or higher risk of death of anything, and they do not have a recurrence of their breast cancer. So... This is big. They did a study. Um, it's so much easier to do blood s- or to do studies in uh, countries who have socialized medicine because all of every person's, every citizen's information, all of their medical records are in one place. So those medical records can be accessed by people who are trying to study this. So um, they did this in um, Norway and. They looked at everybody who had had uh, ER-positive breast cancer that was not metastatic, and all these women were postmenopausal and had symptoms of menopause, which symptoms of low estrogen, dry vagina, painful intercourse, dry skin, um, loss of frontal hair, and then hot flashes, night sweats, inability to sleep because of hot flashes, irritability, depression, Um, Many of these things are what patients complain about, and some people have worse hot flashes. Some people have uh, their major symptom is uh, painful intercourse. So everybody's a little different, but they're all symptoms of low estrogen. And many people can't get through life. They can't think. They can't get through life and get through their relationship with their spouse without estrogen. 
So this is a big deal. And most of the time, patients have been told, eh, you don't need it, eh, you're, it's all in your head, which is not true. It is not in our heads. They can't pat us on the head anymore and say, you don't need estrogen because we do need estrogen. It's just, is estrogen going to be a higher risk for us to die of something than if we don't take it? And they found that the risk is similar, the same. So if you've had breast cancer and if you have these symptoms and you're miserable, then it would be reasonable and not risky to ask your doctor to write some type of estrogen for you. And you'd have to be willing to sign the high-risk consent because, because it's standard of care. It doesn't matter if we have studies that prove that it is not, not dangerous. It matters that we're either following the standard of care or not. And when people have even an old thought that it's still standard of care, we have to acknowledge that. But if you want to sign for your own risk, then sign a consent, and then you'll be able to treat your, your symptoms with estrogen. It's so nice to hear this. This is, when I, when I heard and read all the beliefs that women didn't really need estrogen, which we know we do, um, I would then look at the number of patients in my GYN practices is back uh, while I was starting biobalance hormone replacement, but also while I was just practicing gynecology. I would look at my patients and see uh, which ones had signed the consent and did they get a recurrence of breast cancer. And in fact, they very rarely had a recurrence of breast cancer, never more often than people who didn't take anything and they were miserable, and then they would have a recurrence. So when I would see this, and I know it's a small sample, and I know it's just my practice, but when I read research that doesn't match my experience with my patients, I have to question it. And I did a lot of research, and I didn't find that this was um, a real problem. People were just scared. Oh, we think it causes it, so don't take it. It doesn't hurt anything if you don't take it. Well, it, it does. It, it hurts your life. If you can't have sex because you have so much pain when you have sex because your vagina is so dry and it has shrunk down to the size of a, pe a pencil diameter, then you're not going to be able to have sex. And that's what happens when you don't have estrogen. It's like um, the vagina and the vulva lose their normal anatomy, the clitoris, covers up with a hood and you, and you can't peel the hood back and it hurts if you did. Uh, sometimes the, the labia become flat. So it looks almost like a premenarchal or young woman. Um, everything is very tiny and everything's, everything's very smooth, but if you try to stretch that skin, it will bleed. It is very, it's like tissue paper. It's very thin. So, when you try to have sex with a bottom like that, you're going to bleed and be in pain, and you're not going to want to have sex anymore. Uh, even if you thought it was going to be great, you're going to be uh, proven that it's very painful, and it's it's going to make you, it's like hitting a hot stove. You don't want to do that anymore because it hurt too badly, and it usually hurts longer than just when you're having sex. It usually hurts for several days afterwards while it's healing. Nothing makes a female bottom normal again until you get estrogen, either systemically by taking it orally, pellets, or uh, patches, or if you have uh, estrogen and you put it on locally, that can sometimes, locally meaning put it on your bottom as a cream, then you can sometimes get some of the anatomy back. Now, oral is better. Usually your anatomy comes back the way it used to be. But, and I like the fact that we add testosterone to the estrogen because that actually makes the, uh, the vulva and the vagina less likely to tear or to bleed. And it helps it stretch more like it did when you were prior to menopause. So both those hormones are necessary for getting your bottom completely back. But having estrogen increases the lubrication and increases stretching 
and decreases the amount of trauma you have with intercourse. So for our patients who have been having all of these symptoms, now we have an art we have a research article to go to to say, look, I'm willing to take that chance. Say, and I haven't had this, but they, a patient who has had estrogen receptor positive cancer can say, you know, I've had it. I I am not having a um, good quality of life, and I would like to sign a consent so that I can get my estrogen. That's a reasonable thing to do. Quality of life is important. It's hard to measure. That's why we don't do a lot of studies about quality of life because how do you measure, oh, I, you know, my life is good, I'm happy, I have a good relationship with my husband, I can have sex. How do you, how do you measure that? So it's very hard to do studies on that. But it isn't very hard to do studies on I give somebody estrogen and they don't get, they don't get a recurrence of breast cancer. I mean, that's easy to do a study on. And so it appears as if this is going to be a safe answer to those folks who have had breast cancer, they've been treated, it is not metastatic, and they're postmenopausal, then it should be a reasonable request to have estrogen given to you so that you can get your life back. And I would ask for testosterone as well because I think they work together and you can do with a lower dose of estrogen if you get your testosterone as well. And I always use pellets because I think it's actually makes you feel the most like you did before menopause. So that's my recommendation. So if you're looking for this article, we will have a blog that has it, it uh, the abstract printed underneath it. But it's done by a Dr. C-O-L-D, M-D, and several other doctors, PhDs and MDs in the Journal of National Cancer Institute, um, DJAC 112, and... Um, it was published on July 22nd of 2022. So it's called Systemic or Vaginal Hormone Therapy After Early or After Breast Cancer. And I I misspoke. It was in it was it's a Danish study. It's not it's not Norwegian. I apologize for those Danish uh, people who heard me say that. <laughs> so I hope this helps you. I hope it helps you talk to your doctor about how to get what you need. And uh, I hope it makes you feel more secure and not so scared about taking the estrogen you need to have a normal quality of life as you age. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.